Well hey there kiddos and welcome to your video here called factoring completely. Um, it's just more factoring like we've done except now your polynomials are most likely going to have a leading coefficient which means your x squared term is going to have a coefficient in front. So we're going to start here with number one and it says to factor each polynomial completely. So the very first thing that you need to do is look for a GCF and if there is a greatest common factor, you need to factor that out before you factor the polynomial. So if you look at number one here, so we're just going to look at the numbers 9, 36, and 45. There's definitely a greatest common factor here because 9 will go into all three of those numbers. 9 will go into 9 and into 36 and into 45. So I'm going to have to take a 9 out of that first and then I have to do with, deal with what's left. Well, if I take the 9 out of 9x squared, I'm left with x squared. And then when I do take the 9 out of 36, 36 divided by 9 makes 4x. And then 45 divided by 9 makes 5. And so I've taken out my GCF and now I have to factor what is remaining in these parentheses right here. So I've got to do this x squared minus 4x minus 5. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to make negative 5 that when I add them together make negative 4. So I have negative 1 and positive 5. And if I add those together that makes positive 4. Well, if I needed to make negative 4, then I need to do positive 1 and negative 5. That makes negative 4. So here are my two numbers. So my factors for this polynomial become x plus 1 and x minus 5 with the 9 in front. So let's look at number 2. For number 2, let's look for a greatest common factor. I've got 18, 15, and 18. Well, there's a greatest common factor there as well because 3 will go into all of those numbers. So I'm going to factor out a 3. And if I do that, I'm going to divide and see what's left. So 18 divided by 3 becomes 6d squared. 15 divided by 3 becomes 5d. And then that 18 divided by 3 becomes 6 again. And so now I have to see if I can factor this. So now we're going to go do back to the box method. We're going to draw a box and we're going to use a box to factor this. So I'm going to draw my box. And I know that my 6d squared goes up here in this top corner. And I know that this minus 6 goes down here in the bottom. As for this negative 5d, I've got to figure out what numbers needed to make to split that. So I've got to multiply the first term here times the last term. So 6 times negative 6 makes negative 36. And I need two numbers that when multiplied make negative 36 but add to negative 5. So I'm going to have to do um, negative 1 in 36. Well, when I add that, it makes 35. And even if I change the sign and do 1 in negative 36, it's still not going to be 5. So it's not those. So I have negative 2 and 18, and when I add those, that makes um, 16. Well, that's also not 5. So I have negative 3 and 12. Well, when I add those, that becomes 9. That's not it. I have negative 4 and 9, and when I add those, that makes 5. Well, I need it to be negative 5, so i got to switch the sign so it's 4 and negative 9 to make my negative 5. So there's my two numbers. So this right here splits into 4 and negative 9. So it splits into 4d and negative 9d. And so that's how I fill in those missing ones. And so now I'm going to go do my greatest common factor for each row and column so that I can figure out what this factors out into. So my greatest common factor for this top row, the 6d squared and the 4d, is going to be a 2. This 2 will go into both of those numbers and they have a d in common. This bottom row, or bottom down here, has a negative in both boxes, so I'm going to have to take out a negative. And the biggest number that goes into both 9 and 6 is a 3. Then this column, 60 squared and negative 9d, well, the biggest number that goes into 6 and 9 is a 3. And then they both have a d in common. And then for this column, 4d and negative 6, the biggest number that goes into both of those is a 2. So my two factors for this polynomial that I just dealt with are going to be 2d minus 3 and 3d plus 2. And then I have this factor of 3 that I took out from the very beginning. And so that's what my solution looks like. I have three factors, 3 and then 2d minus 3 and then 3d plus 2. So let's look at another one. 
Let's talk about number four down here. Here's the reason I want to deal with number four. So it has negative 4c squared plus 19c plus 5. Well, 4, 19, and 5 don't have a greatest common factor because 19 and 5 are um, prime numbers, and so there's nothing that goes into all of them. However, because my first number, this leading coefficient, is negative, I'm going to need to take out a negative 1 first. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a negative 1 which is just going to change all of these signs. So this becomes 4c squared minus 19c minus 5. The reason we do this is because if you'll take this negative out first, it makes this much simpler to factor. I know it didn't change any of my numbers, but it certainly does help with signs and, and getting things to work. So you want to take that negative out first. And then we're going to draw our box because we're going to do the box method again. 4c squared goes in the top left, minus 5 goes in the bottom right, and then I'm going to have to multiply my first number times my last number so I can start the rest of this process. So 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, and I need my two numbers that multiply to make negative 20 to add to negative 19. So I'm going to start with negative 1 and 20. Well, when I add that, I get 19. So to make it negative, I'd have to do 1 and negative 20 to get negative 19. So there's my two numbers. So I'm going to have 1c and negative 20c. So I've split this into these two numbers. So now we'll go do GCF. So this top row, the biggest number that will go into both 4 and into 1 is just 1. But they also have a c in common. So I'm going to take out my 1c. This bottom row is negative, so I'll have to take out a negative, And the number that goes into 20 and into 5 will be a 5. Then this column, my 4c squared and this negative 20c, the biggest number that goes into 4 and 20 is 4. And then they have a c in common. And then this column, the only thing that they have in common is between 1c and negative 5 is just a 1. So my factors for this become my negative 1 that I took out at the beginning, then my c minus 5, and my 4c plus 1. So those are the two factors of that. So that's how we deal with that. Um, that's the process that needs to happen if you've got a coefficient in front. So now number five down here says which expressions can represent the dimensions of a rectangular prism with the volume of 12y cubed plus 62y squared plus 80y. Well basically what they're asking you to do is factor this. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to rewrite it down here so I have a little bit of space. I have 12y cubed plus 62y squared plus 80y. And I can see that they all three have a y in common. So I know I'm going to have to at least take a y out because each term has at least one y. I've got y cubed, y squared, and a y. So there is a y in common. Now I've got to figure out my greatest common factor between 12, 62, and 80. And so I'd have to do, if you don't know it off the top of your head, you'll draw your t's and you'll go work through that so you can figure out the biggest number they have in common. And I can see that all of these are even numbers. So I know I'm going to start by checking to see if 2 is maybe the greatest common factor. And so I'm going to divide them all by 2 and then see if there's anything left. So this becomes 6. This becomes 31. And this becomes a, uh, 40. Now they're not all even numbers and 31 is prime. So that's going to be it. So I'm going to pull out a 2 and a y. Which leaves me, when I divide all of these by 2, with 6y squared, because I, one of my y's is out here, plus 31y plus 40. And now I'm going to have to factor this using the box, and it's going to drag out onto over here, but I'm going to go and I'm going to have to multiply this 6 times this 40, which makes 240. Oh my goodness, this is a big, ugly problem. I'm going to have to list factors of 240 that add up to 31, and so I'm going to give you a shortcut for finding factors of a number really quick. So if you'll grab your calculator, and go to y equals, clear out anything that you might have typed into y equals, and then in the y1, the number we want factors of is 240, and I'm going to divide that by x so that I can, this will give me the factors. If I now go to second and graph and list this table, it shows me all of the factors of 240. That just list them for me. And you only want whole number factors. These decimals don't matter. Just the ones that are whole numbers and you're looking for the ones that add up to equal 31. 
So if you scroll through and you go through all of those factors, you should hopefully get down to this 15 and 16. 15 times 16 makes 240. That's what this table is telling me. And when I add them, they make 31. So it tells me my two numbers are going to be 15 and 16. And luckily, everything's positive, so I don't have to worry about any negatives. So now I'm going to draw my box. And I'm going to fill in what I know. So I'm going to start with this first term, top left corner, 6y squared. 40 goes in the bottom right corner. And then the two numbers I just came up with are my split. So they go here. So I have 15y and 16y. And then I'm going to go do my GCF. So top row, biggest number that goes into 6 and into 15 is a 3. And they both have a y. Bottom column down, or bottom row down here, 16 and 40. The biggest number that goes into both of those, I'm pretty sure, is a 4. Nope, it's an 8. 8 will go into 16. 8 will also go into 40. So there's your greatest common factor. So you got to be careful. Sometimes you think you know it, but you don't. This column right here, the 6y squared and the 16y. So the biggest number that goes into 6 and into 16 is going to be a 2. And they happen to have a y in common. And then this one right here for 15y and 40, the biggest number is going to be a 5. So my factors for here are 3y plus 8 and 2y plus 5. And then I have this 2y that I took out from the very beginning. So my three factors need to be 2y, 3y plus 8, and 2y plus 5. Well, they all have a 2y except for this one, so it can't be that one. So then this one has a 2y plus 8. That's not it. This has a 2y plus 4. That's not it. Here it is. 2y plus 5, 3y plus 8. So that's how we factor completely. Look for a greatest common factor and then factor what is remaining if you can. Sometimes, like you saw today, when you tried to do one or two of them, they became prime and you couldn't factor what was left. But most of the time, once you take out a GCF, you can still factor what's remaining. And so you'd use your box, multiply your first term times your last term so that you can figure out what you mean to split that middle term up into its two parts. So that's factoring completely. We will practice this tomorrow when you guys come to class and I will see you then.